from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. It's a new era for the old Northwestern Energy Building as a film production company moves in to capitalize on a new industry in Butte. I'll tell you about it coming up. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. Democrats promised major climate change initiatives when they were campaigning last year, but are they about to be eliminated from their spending bill? We explain the controversy next. I'm Jordan Johnson. Coming up, the U.S. Attorney for Montana sent out a letter for Montana law enforcement citing statutes to possibly prosecute people threatening school boards. Good morning. Once again, Southwest Montana, 631 now on a pleasant morning so far as we have just gotten lovely. done talking about. Uh, lovely. I just uh, replaced the battery on the patio cam. I'll be you back did? out there in just a little bit. And it's I garbage day, so you'll be hearing the beep, beep, beep. I get accompanied by the sound of backing up trucks all morning long. It'll be fun. It's a pleasant background. It, it could be worse, that's for sure. Could be. Uh, beautiful out there. You mentioned a pleasant oh. morning. I think that's a great way to describe it. You can see just a few thin clouds are rolling through on our full moon evening mm -hmm. uh, into your early morning. Temperatures in the 40s for the most part, 32 in West Yellowstone, 33 in Butte, uh, Dillon at 39, Ennis at 49, about a 17 mile an hour wind blowing in the uh, Madison Valley this morning. So it's, uh, a lot of folks would call that calm. <laughs> it's 17 miles an hour in there. Uh, meantime, <laughs> temperatures warming into the low 60s in the mining or into the uh, Bozeman area today with more sunshine than clouds for Butte. Right about 60 degrees today, uh, mostly sunny skies. And if you like today, you're going to love tomorrow. And I have details of that again from the patio with the new battery in a few minutes. And I can vouch for that. He put yeah, in a new yeah, battery. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 632 now this morning. Starting next month, the U.S.-Canada border will reopen, allowing Canadians who are fully vaccinated against COVID to come to the U.S. And MTN's Coulter Anstad went to the, uh, the High Line to find out what businesses are saying about this news. With the announcement of the reopening of the U.S.-Canada border next month, you might think everybody is jumping for joy. While the reopening is generally expected to be a positive thing, not every business is expecting to see a big impact. At Big Sky Foods in Cutbank, owner Jim Ryder is mildly enthusiastic about the reopening of the U.S.'s northern border. I'm not sure how much of a difference it's going to make for us personally in this building, but I'm excited for the fact that people can come down and visit and get some of the goods and services they were getting prior. Goods like creamer. Coconut, um, coffee make coconut creamer is something that they can't get up there. So a gal comes down and she buys like 50 at a time. Other businesses feel the same way. The owner of a retail business who didn't want to go on camera said he keeps Canadian currency at his register for Canadian customers but the amount of money hasn't changed in two years. While the reopening of the border may not be a huge windfall for his business, he's glad the border is reopening. In Shelby, oh, this is kind of what we're known for. Because Quilt with class owner Bonnie Nickel is more enthusiastic. Canadian business is 30% of my business. Not only has she missed the profit, she's missed the people who provide it. I keep in contact with some of them. Some of their friends out, you know, some of them too. One gal emailed me oh, about six months ago and said that maybe we should start considering a tunnel. She said it works on the south, southern border. Maybe it would work here. For more details on the border reopening and what you need to know if you want to go to Canada, check out this story on our website. In Cutbank, Coulter Anstad, MTN News. And according to a statement in July from the U.S. Travel Association, the border closure has cost the U.S. economy $1.5 billion in potential travel exports every month it's been closed. And as we reported earlier this month, Montana U.S. Senator Steve Daines said in a speech on the Senate floor pushing to reopen the border as one example, business is down about 25 percent in Great Falls because of the closure. Well, letters from the Federal Bureau of Investigation arrived at county attorney's offices, uh, law enforcement agencies, and school boards across Montana. In the letters, the FBI offers to help in any cases of threats against school boards and teachers. MTN's Jordan Johnson spoke with the Lewis and Clark County Sheriff about the letters. The acting United States attorney for Montana sent out a letter to Montana law enforcement and education leaders outlining possible federal statutes to prosecute people that are making threats against school boards. It included three pages of statutes 
ranging from conspiracy to depriving a person of their civil rights, to stalking and cyber stalking, and a statute related to false information of hoaxes. The letter stated, quote, in response to a nationwide rise in threats and acts of violence against our educational community, Attorney General Garland has led the FBI and the United States attorneys to partner with federal, state, local, and tribal leaders to address the problem. And Sheriff Leo Dutton of Lewis and Clark County says the help is not needed. I do appreciate their concern, but that is a local issue and I don't believe that's necessary. Sheriff Dutton says that the enforcement agencies within the Helena area are prepared for threats towards school board members and teachers. And we are well equipped, the Helena police and the Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's Office are well equipped to respond and take those uh, types of calls. And that there have not been local conflicts. Not that I'm aware of, but the tensions do get high. Not that I'm aware of, though. For now, the Lewis and Clark Sheriff's Office politely declined the FBI's and the U.S. Attorney for Montana's assistance on the issue. In Helena, Jordan Johnson, MTN News. Well, 636 now this morning. You may have already seen news reports about certain parts of President Biden's spending bill being on the chopping block, especially some policies that are meant to address climate change. Our Joe St. George shows us what's in and what's out and how they might affect our environment for years to come. The transition to the future of how we power our homes has already begun. And you can see our meters here on the wall. Plenty of businesses nationwide, like the Jones Family Farm in Connecticut, have already installed environmentally friendly solar panels to generate the electricity they need. The energy we're generating does not have any carbon uh, as an output associated with it. Tom Harbinson runs an entire wine distribution building off their solar panels. But while some businesses say the switch is a no-brainer, others are more reluctant. That includes some utility companies who generate the country's electricity. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, 2.3 percent of America's electricity is generated through solar panels. 60 percent of electricity comes from fossil fuels like coal and natural gas. When I think climate, I think jobs. President Biden believes the more the country's utility companies rely on fossil fuels, the harder it will be to stop the planet from getting warmer. It's why he supports the Clean Electricity Performance Program. The $150 billion proposal rewards utility companies transitioning to clean energy while penalizing utility companies that keep the status quo. However, the New York Times first reported last week that plan is likely getting removed from the pending spending legislation in Congress. Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, whose vote is needed to pass anything, reportedly doesn't like the idea of fining utility companies. He also announced this week opposition to a carbon tax proposal that would fine companies that emit carbon. Manchin's position on climate now very much in line with Republicans, like Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming. The House Democrat plans will effectively end any new oil, natural gas, coal, and hard rock mineral production on federal lands and waters. But just because some climate change policy proposals are off the table, it doesn't mean every climate change proposal is off the table. $4,500 tax credits to buy electric vehicles are still tentatively included, as is a proposal to spend $10 billion to create the Climate Conservation Corps, where thousands of young people would be paid to help fix the environment. Not to mention tax incentives for building wind turbines and other renewables are still included in the bill. President Biden is also committed to executive action on the issue. But environmentalists like Professor Leah Stokes with the University of California, Santa Barbara, says these new cuts to the plan hurt. The Clean Electricity Performance Program delivered about a third of the pollution cuts in the package. Those are really critical policy. And the answer cannot be, oh, gee, shucks, we lost out on that. That's OK. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Well, a film production company originally bases in Hamilton is now in Butte and is making big changes to the old Northwestern Energy Building in the city's uptown. MTN's John Amy has the story. The old facade of the former Northwestern Energy Building is coming down. It's a sign of change by a film production company that's moving in and it hopes to embrace a new industry of arts and entertainment here in the mining city. You know, as long as things keep moving the direction they have been here over the last couple of years, I really think not just Butte, but really the entire state of Montana is really set up to be a, a major film hub for the, for the country, really. 
Montana Studios purchased the 115,000 square foot building on East Broadway in early 2020. It will have office spaces, residential living spaces, and a large production facility for television and film industry. Large locker rooms, um, several rooms for dressing rooms, changing rooms, wardrobe, hair and makeup. So it's really nice in two floors. We really kind of cover everything that's needed for a base camp and small productions. A major change to the building will be restoring its original look by removing the blue-green facade that was put on the building in the 1960s. Crews were being very careful to not damage the original facade, making the work slow going. The boss told us if we break a window, that's good. there goes our bonus. <laughs> So we're definitely being careful, yeah. you know, because it costs a lot of people money and then extra time, and, you know, that costs extra time and money when you have accidents. You know, one thing about Butte, there's a lot of creative people in Butte. Is that something that you want to take advantage of? Absolutely. Yeah. Between, you know, the Cold Light that's already here and the um, Orphan Girl Theater, you guys have two really good theater programs already going. Yeah, definitely. It's going to take, you know, the community really getting behind this and uh, being part of it.